What up everyone, it's your boy Jester James here coming at you with another YouTube video. Spoiler alert, continuing our networking basic series in the next couple videos, after this one, we'll be focusing on configuring a computer network and then building that computer network. But first, what is a computer network? In the previous video, we talked about what things are inside a computer network. We have so many different things. We've got hosts, we've got routers, firewalls, switches, even printers, you know, anything that can be connected. So today, we're going to dive into what is a computer network. Well, actually, it's simple, as I'm sure you're, you've guessed. There's actually three fundamental types of computer networks. One is the LAN, or local area network. And this would be your local group of network devices that allow communication between the other connected devices and your LAN, or local area network, again. It covers the smallest area, such as your home, like our wonderful abode here, colleges, schools, hospitals, and so on. Now, the next level up is a MAN. So first we have the LAN, now we have a MAN. MAN is a metropolitan area network. Now this is the next level up, it covers a larger area, larger than the land, and now for mans, you can think of things like small towns, cities, etc., things along those lines. Now, the last level up out of the three is WAN, or Wide Area Network. So, so far, what the three things ones are, are LAN, MAN, and WAN. L, D M, and W. LAN, WAN, LAN, MAN, and WAN. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? So LAN, or Wide Area Network, covers the larger area than a LAN or a MAN, such as a country or a continent. As defined by some folks, you know, there's different ones, but for the most part, we're going to be, for the most part, for us at least, we're going to be dealing with our networks on a small scale. So we'll mostly be referring to our LAN, Local Area Network, when we simply mention our network. So, in the future, I'm not going to say we're going to be messing with our LAN or we're going to be messing with our MAN. No. I'm just going to be saying we're going to be doing some network configurations. So that being said, how can you configure a network? Believe it or not, there's many different ways you can. Connect your, you can connect your network with Wi-Fi or hard cable wires like the Cat5 or RG45. Those are the wires that I showed you in the previous video. I'll saw a picture up over here on this side. I believe the Penguin is on this side. What up, Pengy? Uh, shout out for the day for our penguin, our every bids. So the configuration of a network can be mapped out into what's called a network topology or a network map. So who cares, right? Well, here's the thing. Choosing the right topology for your personal or company's operational model can increase performance while making it easier to locate problems, troubleshoot errors, and more effectively allocate resources across the network to ensure optimal performance health, and uptime. All things that are very important and critical for keeping the network, and thus your organization, happy and alive. A streamlined and properly managed network topology, as they're called, can increase energy and data efficiency, which then helps reduce the amount of money you have to spend on the cost of running and managing that network. So let's go over these four basic network topologies, and we'll get on our way to building our own network. Earlier we had the different types of networks in terms of size. Here we're going to talk about topologies or architectures. So what are the different ways that you can build your network? So here we have four basic network topologies. You've got bus, star, ring, and mesh. A bus topology orients all the devices on a network along a single cable running in a single direction from one end of the network to the other, which is why it's sometimes called a line topology or backbone topology. It's much like for a bus, right? That's the name, bus topology. So data flow on the network also follows the route of the cable moving in one direction. Advantages of a bus topology. Bus topologies are a good cost-effective choice for smaller networks because the layout is simple and allows all devices to be connected by a single cable. And if needed, more nodes can be easily added to the network by joining additional cables. Now the disadvantages of a bus topology are because they're using a single cable to transmit data, they're somewhat vulnerable. If that cable experiences a failure, the whole network goes down, which can be time consuming and expensive to restore, which can be less of an issue with smaller networks. 
Bus topologies are best suited for small networks because there's only so much bandwidth, and every additional node will slow transmission speeds. Further, data is half duplex, which means it can't be sent in two opposite directions at the same time. So this layout is not the ideal choice for networks with huge amounts of traffic. Next is star. A star topology, the most common network topology, is laid out so every node in the network is directly connected to one central hub via coaxial, twisted pair, or fiber optic cable. Acting as a server, this central node manages data transmission as information sent from any node on the network has to pass through the central one to reach its destination and functions as a repeater which helps prevent data loss. Advantages of star topology. Star topologies are common since they allow you to conveniently manage your entire network from a single location. Because each of the nodes is independently connected to the central hub, should one go down, the rest of the network will continue functioning unaffected, making the star topology a stable and secure network layout. Additionally, devices can be added, removed, and modified without taking the entire network offline. On the physical sides of things, the structure of the star topology uses relatively little cabling to fully connect to the network, which allows for both straightforward setup and management over time as the network expands or contracts. The simplicity of the network design makes life easier for administrators too, because it's easy to identify where errors or performance issues are occurring. Personally, I would choose a star, star topology simply because of the fact that in today's world, a lot of our, our network architectures can kind of get some down. So the, the, the bus topology isn't used too frequently on a, on a large scale. So while I'm talking about all these different topologies, one good thing to keep in mind is that there's things that you have to think about about these topologies and things when you're choosing the correct topology that you have to be aware of. And I'll get into that a little bit later, but one of those things is scalability. So when you're choosing your different network topology, depending on your size of the organization, correct? Whether you're using a LAN, WAN, or a MAN, it could be strategic to choose one of these topologies that I'm going over over the other one simply based off of size alone. That being said, let's talk about the disadvantages of a star topology. On the flip side, if the central hub goes down of the star topology, the rest of the network can't function. But if the central hub is properly managed and kept in good health, administrators shouldn't have too many issues. The overall bandwidth and performance of the network are also limited by the central node's configurations and technical specifications making star topologies expensive to set up and operate. The next topology is a ring topology. And a ring topology is where nodes are arranged in a circle or a ring and the data can travel through the ring network in either one direction or both directions, with each device having exactly two neighbors. Now the pros of the ring topology, since each device is only connected to the ones on either side, when data is transmitted, the packets also travel along the circle, moving through each of the intermediate nodes until they arrive at their destination. If a large network is arranged in a ring topology, repeaters can be used to ensure packets arrive correctly and without data loss. Only one station on the network is permitted to send data at a time, which greatly reduces the risk of packet collisions, making RIC topologies efficient at transmitting data without errors. By and large, RIC topologies are cost effective and inexpensive to install, and the intricate point-to-point -point connectivity of the nodes makes it relatively easy to identify issues or misconfigurations on the network. Now the cons of the ring topology. A ring topology is still vulnerable to failure without proper network management. As is everything, proper network management is the best, that's why you have network administrators. <laughs> Since the flow of data transmission moves unidirectionally between nodes along each ring, if one node goes down, it can take the entire network with it. That's why it's imperative for each of the nodes to be monitored and kept in good health. Nevertheless, even if you're vigilant and attentive to node performance, your network can still be taken down by a transmission line failure, and the question of scalability should be taken into consideration in a ring topology, especially because all the devices of the network share bandwidth. So the addition of more devices can contribute to overall communication delays. 
Network administrators need to be mindful of the devices added to the topology to avoid overburdening the network's resources and capacity. Additionally, the entire network must be taken offline to reconfigure, add, or remove nodes. And while that's not the end of the world, scheduling downtime for the network can be inconvenient and costly. Now the last topology, my favorite topology to go to, my favorite topology is the mesh topology. Now a mesh topology is an intricate and elaborate structure of point-to-point -point connections where the nodes are interconnected. A lot of these modern day networks that we kind of see are, are mostly you leveraging mesh networks or mesh topology. Most of, the, most of our, our networks today don't usually use a single topology or a single, you won't see one thing used at once. You're, you're going to see multiple different architectures, multiple different setups, and as a network administrator, it'd be your job to understand the architecture of your, the network that you're defending or administrating, and you'd want to make sure that you understand the network and where the data is flowing at its different points, et cetera, et cetera. However, that will be done on the job. For the sake of this video, we're going, to keep, we're going to be keeping it all simple, and in the real world, it's obviously all scaled up, so you're going to see multiple things at the same time. But for the sake of our video series, we're going to keep things simple, so we'll just be sticking to these few topologies, none the same. But the biggest one you'll be messing around with and playing and seeing in the real world is most likely a mesh topology. So there's full or partial mesh topologies, and a partial mesh topology is mostly interconnected with a few nodes with only two or three connections, while full mesh topologies are, surprise, fully interconnected. The web-like structure of mesh topologies offers two different methods of data transmission, routing and flooding. When data is routed, the nodes use logic to determine the shortest distance from the source to destination. And when the data is flooded, the information is sent to all nodes within the network without the need for routing logic. Now the advantages of mesh topology, mesh topologies are reliable and stable and the complex degree of interconnectivity between nodes makes the network resistant to failure. For instance, no single device going down can bring the network offline. Now the disadvantages of a mesh topology Mesh topologies are incredibly labor intensive. Each interconnection between nodes requires a cable and configuration once deployed, so it can also be time consuming to set up. As with other topology structures, the cost of cabling adds up fast, and to say mesh networks require a lot of cabling is an understatement. Now, as I was alluding to earlier, what if more than one topology works? Perhaps you might consider a hybrid approach. Hybrid topologies combine two or more different topology stru structures. Hybrid topologies combine two or more different topology structures. The tree topology is a good example, integrating the bus and star layouts. Hybrid structures are most commonly found in larger companies where individual departments have personalized network topologies adapted to suit their needs and network usage. Don't forget about Wi-Fi and a lot of IoT devices in your iPhones and a lot of modern day devices these days leveraging Wi-Fi don't need that cable that makes the network topology so critical. When we're talking about these network topologies and networks, we're mostly talking about hardwired devices. Remember in our previous video we mentioned hardwired devices versus devices that connect through Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi devices would, would be leveraged kind of similarly in a, in a logic in which there's no cables, so some of the advantages and disadvantages take those into account as well. And hybrid topology is a prime example of this, in which case you have a hybrid. In a, in a modern day network, it's mostly going to be hybrid, meaning that you're going to see a bunch of different topologies. You have an ability to have a degree of flexibility, and it provides a few, limited, a few limitations on the network structure itself. So, given that, a hybrid setup can't really accommodate some things, which makes these previous network topologies important in themselves. So, how each type of network topology comes with its own disadvantages, and as a network grows in complexity, so too does the experience and know-how required on the part of the administrators to keep everything functioning properly and optimally. 
There's also the monetary cost to consider when creating these network topologies. Remember what no matter remember that no matter what topology you use, choosing the best one depends on the following factors. Length of cable needed, cable type, cost, and scalability. Now we're not going to be building the computer network for New York City here, but we will be building a small network that would be similar to a small business. So keep what we've learned in this video in mind, but acknowledge the scale that we're going to be networking at, right? Remember, scalability. <laughs> All right, wonderful. In this video, we learned about what a computer network is as defined by LAN, MAN, and WAN. Then after we learned about different network topologies and why some are better than others, based off cable type, length, cost, and scalability. That's the fundamentals of our hardware portion on the Networking Basics series down pat, which is lit. So what's next? In the next video, we're going to start becoming our own net admins, our own network administrators. We're going to start to plan and build out our own computer network. So get ready, get hyped, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!